Sir, what are you doing? Oh, excuse me, officer. I'm just playing with my nine mil. That's all. Nine millimeter? Yeah. It's obsolete. What are you talking about? What? 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 Miami shootout. It sucks. So what do you recommend? 10 mil. 10 mil. Just one more. I, it probably doesn't have much more recoil. All right, I'll go grab a 10 mil. Sir, what yeah. are you doing now? Ah, just messing with that 10 mil that you recommended, officer. I never did that. What? It's a hand cannon. What? Yeah, I know. What? 40 caliber. 40 cal? Yes, the new best thing. Change your mind again? Fine, I'll go pick up a 40 cal. Sir. <sighs> Sir, what are you doing now? What now, Ossifer? What? What is that, a 40? Yes! What is wrong with you? It's exactly what you... I never did that. Nine millimeter. You said nine millimeter wasn't good, so you went to 10 mil, and then you went to 40. No, it is superior to 40, 10 millimeter, all of it. Why did law enforcement ditch the 40 cal and go back to the nine mil after all this time? That's fine. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms. We got Kaya back with us. What's up guys? And we are here to talk about something that I think you're gonna have a little bit of experience on. 40 cal and why it seems as if law enforcement agencies and federal agencies are moving away from the 40 caliber projectile and headed right back or cartridge to nine mil. Cause 40 cal was adopted a while ago, nine mil was the thing and then all of a sudden 40 cal was the thing and then it's back to nine mil. Can you just kind of like, first of all, what is it right now that the FBI is carrying? Yeah, the Bureau is currently carrying a Hornady uh, critical duty, 135 yeah. grain ammo. Uh, so a little, little oxidized, so yeah. yeah, it's got some age to it, right? A little bit. So uh, to answer the question why law enforcement agencies are ditching 40 caliber to go to switch to nine millimeter, I think we should address why did they go to 40 caliber to begin with? Yeah. And that all happened. So of course, FBI is not the only law enforcement agency out there. There's so many of them out there, but the Bureau has the uh, resources to do a lot of research. And because of that, they set the standard, for the most part, where people, like if you have your own agency, you don't have to spend mm -hmm. the money. Bureau already did it, came up with it, they're implementing it, so you can simply adopt. Right. So with that being said, back in 1986, which uh, a lot of people should know, there was a uh, Miami shootout with the FBI mm -hmm. and uh, two bank robbers. And in that shootout, two FBI agents were killed, and five agents were wounded. And when that shootout started, the one of the FBI agents that actually lost his life, he was able to engage these bank robbers and hit the person. Uh, I believe his name was Michael Plant. Yeah, he hit him numerous times with a nine millimeter projectile. Yeah. And later on, obviously Michael Plant passed uh, away because of those uh, injuries, but not right away. And in law enforcement, what we want is this immediate incapacitation. And they weren't able to deliver this immediate incapacitation. So agents actually hit him. He was able to return, you know, return fire and actually kill two agents and wound a bunch of people. So he was well, hit, you know, prior to actually killing. The absolutely. Situation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's taken some uh, serious rounds. One of the rounds actually hit him in the arm mm. that went in and stopped just an inch away from, like very close to his heart. Oh, wow. And his inside his lungs, like he had like 1.3 liters uh, amount of like blood. blood. Yeah, just because it, it started to fill up. As, yeah. Exactly, so he was he was mortally wounded, but he didn't die right away. So with that being said, what happened after that? The Bureau looked into it, they're like, okay, this nine millimeter is too small or it wasn't effective mm -hmm. enough to get that immediate incapacitation. So they had 10 millimeter uh, rounds with them. Yeah. Yeah, with a 10 millimeter, they're like, you know what? And they had a Smith & Wesson 10 millimeter handgun. So that'll do the job. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you know what? We gotta go bigger and the bigger is better. And they wanted to use 10 millimeters to deliver that punch. And yes, 10 millimeter will do that job. But I mean, good luck doing that with a handgun uh, to carry every day and yeah. It's heavier, obviously, limited capacity. I mean, enormous recoil, just overall not practical mm -hmm. at all. And very soon after that, Bureau realizes, okay, this is not practical. Yeah. We need to come up with a different solution. So with that, what they did was they contacted the ammunition company and they're like, you know what? We need to come up with something different. It, it'll still be better than the nine millimeter, but 
we want it to be, <laughs> I guess, less snappy than 10 yeah. millimeter or something that's just a little bit uh, different, more yeah. manageable than 10 millimeter. Mm -hmm. And that is when my friend's 40 caliber was born. And that's when 40 cal entered the chat. So the misconception mm -hmm. is that the 40 cal is the medium between 45 and 9 mil, when it's actually the medium between 9 mil and 10 mil. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. So what they did was just, and I don't know the exact details on this, but they just got a cu couple of millimeters mm -hmm. uh, off the uh, 10 millimeter and changed the load a little bit and yeah. came up with a uh, 40. Now, after that, 40 caliber was the preferred ammunition for the Bureau and a bunch of other law enforcement agencies follow suit until about 2014. So yeah. the Bureau, the uh, BRF, the Ballistic Research Facility at yeah. Quantico, they constantly do research. Yeah. They always do, and they are literally one of the best in the world. They know what they're doing, they follow the science, the scientists actually uh, do it. Like It's not like some gun people who like guns, the actual scientists doing all these tests. And they found out in 2014, like when they basically switched, yeah. that they were getting insane amount of uh, ballistic, terminal ballistics from a nine millimeter. Specifically, it was the uh, Gold Dot oh, yeah. uh, G2 okay. uh, mm -hmm. is what they uh, switched to. Yeah. Uh, getting some significant, like very, very well performing uh, terminal ballistics from a nine millimeter. Mm -hmm. The expansion ratio was perfect, the, uh, the velocity and all that. So the Bureau, uh, decided to, it was no brainer for them, decided to switch to nine millimeter at that point. So, but uh, this is what I wanna say though. They compare, when they were doing their testing, so just to go back a little bit, when they're doing their testing, there's this uh, 500 point scale. Yeah. Uh, that they put all of these rounds against. Okay. So to see where they score. The nine millimeter back in 1986. I'm, I'm assuming too back then, it was probably just standard FMJ nine mil, right? That's like, it, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what they did was they actually tested the 1986 Miami shootout uh, nine millimeter. Yeah. And that thing scored in the 30s. Uh, out, five, of, five, out of 500? Five, yeah. And the criteria- that's, that's not good, right? Like it's not like closer to one's better, right? That is exactly, I think. <laughs> yes, the, the, the lower the worse it is, right? Yeah. So in the 30s, it's terrible. Ooh, yeah, terrible. That, that sucks. Yeah. Again, Bureau has this criteria. A uh, 12 to 18 inches penetration after going through an intermediate barrier. So, okay, so you're saying, so after going to like an intermediate barrier, is that like clothing and stuff like that? Clothing, yeah. it could be like a plywood dry, uh, drywall or a yeah. car door and stuff like that. Got right? it, okay, so, yeah. so you want 10 to 12 inches of penetration mm -hmm. and some people might be like, well, why is that? Why do you want the bullet to go through somebody? Cause you know, some people aren't 10 to 12 inches yep. thick, right? Um, uh, there's some small people out there. Uh, but also you got to think if you're being shot from the side, yep. right? There's a lot of meat here and everything and try to deliver an incapacitating effect. You got to think you're going through bone, muscle, sternum, everything else, right? You know, depending on which way the bullet's traveling. So you want to have that deeper penetration to deliver that incapacitating shot, right? Very good point. In fact, that is exactly what it is. Like when Michael Platt was hit, mm. he was hit from his arm and that went through his arm into his body, but stopped before hitting his heart. Oh, okay. Yeah, so See what I'm saying? Yeah. With that nine millimeter round. But if that nine millimeter was the right nine millimeter that we're using today, it'll go right through his heart. Yeah, which is, okay. so which is the funny part because what's being used today, the critical duty is actually technically a hollow point. Yes. Which yes. people expect to have less penetration mm -hmm. because it's that, that cavity there is gonna fill with flesh or whatever other type of material, mm -hmm. expand, and then drastically transfer energy, which is what you're looking to do, but also drastically slow the bullet down. So how is it that it's able to penetrate deeper by also being a hollow point in comparison to like the FMJ? Is it just we're using higher quality materials? We've got better ballistics in the, and better technology and the rounds we're using today, is that? Yeah, absolutely, it's the technology, guys. Yeah. So 1986, you had just your regular full metal jacket, um, nine millimeter ammo. Right. And as the companies are constantly testing and trying to figure out better ways to increase efficiency of a round, uh, they keep coming up with better ways, right? Yeah. So 2014, when we switched to a nine millimeter, uh, a, the uh, G2 Gold yeah. Dot, that, was, that proved to show that it surpassed ballistics uh, performance over 40, other nine millimeters, 40 and 45. Hmm. The like, nine mil did better the, than 40 and 45. Absolutely, and, and then I'll get to that. Like it's, I remember, uh, like we're jumping around, but I remember when I was 
I get certified mm -hmm. to be a firearm instructor, and we were going through some of these ballistics uh, information from yeah. the uh, BRF. And when I first saw the ballistics results of the 9mm we were using, which was the G2 and then switched to obviously Hornady Critical Duty, it surpassed uh, a comparable. Mm -hmm. 40 and 45, I was like, what? Yeah. Because I'm just like a lot of people. Like, wait a minute, a 45 caliber, I mean, it's, this is giant, right? This is huge. It's thick boy. Compared to, if you look Alec. at these, <laughs> thick boy, like <laughs> Alec, right? Okay, <laughs> there you go. This is huge. But this guy outperformed this guy, which you're like, what? And I personally saw, I saw the data too. It's so, but I want to also emphasize mm -hmm. this, I'm talking about a specific manufacturer, specific cartridge that outperformed that. Not all nine millimeters are created equal. Yeah. Some yeah. of them will we, not we have that. the expansion. Yeah. yeah. Some of them will not have the expansion. Some of them will not have, will not have the proper materials. It will not have the proper load. It, it won't expand. It, it just, they're not created equal. So don't, after this video, I don't want you to go out there and just grab any nine millimeter for yourself. It really, you need to go shop with a reputable, reputable brand. With today's yeah. technology, their nine millimeter is very, very well. Uh, yeah, and now, I mean, and it's it all is very interesting, right? Uh, and then you look at the Hornady, again, critical duty, which is being widely used around law enforcement. And uh, you take a look at the very opening of it, and there is actually this polymer, uh, what they call the flex tip. Mm -hmm. And it's a polymer filling that goes into the actual hollow point of the projectile itself. And it actually offers a pretty neat um, I guess you'd say uh, purpose, right? So what that does is actually prevents any type of like soft material like shirts and things like that to actually start to cause any type of deformation of the round. It gets through that first before it starts to actually fill. And then once this actually has some real substance behind it, like, oh, I don't know, flesh, bone, things like yeah. that, then it starts to open up. So now you start to realize too that because it has this flex tip, you know, device, uh, that might offer also a little bit better penetration and also deliver probably a little bit more of a punch, I guess you could say, Absolutely. because it's starting to actually expand when you want it to, yep. not just right off the bat whenever it starts to come in contact with, you know, clothing, you know, something as thin as a shirt or a yep. thick jacket, right? So that's, no, that's all pretty interesting. That, that is very interesting and that is exactly why. So yeah. you don't want that uh, expansion mm -hmm. uh, prematurely, right? right? Uh, on top of that, so we're talking about ballistics now because there's some other reasons why law enforcement went from uh, 40 to 9, but let's continue talking about the ballistics. Okay. So in 9 millimeter, so I want to talk about the expansion. A, a, I could talk about the G2, the uh, Hornady critical uh, duty. The expansion ratio of a four, an average 45 is about point, uh, point 0.71. Mm -hmm. And a nine millimeter that the Bureau uses is 0.69. Nice. I mean, think about this. So, of course, you would, uh, you're, not you'd supposed like to, that. you're not supposed to acknowledge it. You're I know, but going. I will continue, yes. 71 is 69. So, they're just completely different. Like, when it comes to sizes, like, yeah. I mean, this is just huge compared to a nine millimeter. But yet, the nine millimeter has the expansion ratio hmm. almost almost similar to a 45 when it's fully expanded. Which, which is wild. It's yeah. in insane. So what what did, was it the critical duty that you guys scored and everything? Because you said out of 500, the FMJ 9 mil got like 30 something. So what so, did that get? There you go. So we're going to go to that. So they tested a bunch of other uh, yeah. rounds. So they tested the uh, 40. Yeah. Okay. 40 was in the nearly mid 200s. 45 was mid in the mid, mid 200s. Okay. And uh, and so if people are wondering, like, what is this 500? It's yeah. like a uh, 500 different categories. Oh wow! Yeah, like they just went like oh, barrier blind and mm. uh, the materials expansion, all kinds of like different things. Like I can't probably I don't probably know. the I mean probably like one category, but you know velocity degradation at 10 feet compared to the next category at 20 feet. You know, so it probably just keeps yes. going. Okay, got so it. 500 of these different points that the round has to hit for right. the score, right? So uh, 40 was in the uh, like mid 200s, mid okay. to low 200s. 45 was in mid to high high 200s. Okay. And the actual, the nine millimeter was like 450. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the insane, exactly. So it scored, it 
outperformed, it completely outperformed 40 and 45, like, and blew it out of the water. Was it all the same manufacturer too? Like, was it all Hornady or was they, it all, would they have a bunch of different manufacturers they, of different cal calibers too? And, that's my understanding. My understanding yeah. is they use a bunch of different 40s and 45s. Just because yeah. there's, because what happens? People go out there and grab a ammo from a gun store, right? Yeah. Different kind of, whatever, all kinds of different ammos that people sell. But they grabbed reputable brands, yeah. according to them. Yeah, because right? because one of my personal favorites and what I carry for my my everyday carry is the yeah. Federal HST. I just love the expansion on this. And if I'm being completely honest, it's what we had the most of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's, okay, cool. And on top of that, doing the research behind it, I was like, glad we got quite a bit of that when we yeah. had it. And then it was, you know, I was like, sweet, cool. I'll use Federal HST. That's what I like. Um, I'm not saying that one's better than the other. I mean, one yeah. probably is. Do I know it off the top of my head? No. Let me know what you guys think. But it, it, for it to score as high as it did as a little yeah. nine mil, see, that's why I asked, I was like, okay, was it one manufacturer, like like was Hornady doing the nine mil and did Federal do the 40? Because probably Hornady just paid the FBI a good bit of money and said, that looks like a 450 bullet, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. you guys want to use that contract? But uh, no, from what it sounds like, there was a bunch of different manufacturers utilizing or throwing in a bunch of different calibers. Yeah, so, and, and, hmm. and the information I'm giving you, I've learned this from my uh, lectures or talking to other uh, uh, friends in, in, in the industry, yeah. let's just say, in the field. And so I may be off here and there, but they're very, very, um, my understanding is this nine millimeter the Hornady or the G2 just completely blew 40 and 45 out of the water in a comparable awesome. setting. Wow. And so one might ask, well, then why don't they make exactly the same nine millimeter that they, the Hornady made or the G2 uh, uh, Gold Dot made? So pretty much the same, pro the same projectile, the same type of powder, the Everything. same type of load that you would have, but make it now for the 40. And the you probably have a better bullet, right? You would have a 480 or 550 or whatever, like right. just yeah, go yeah, crazy, yeah. Right? right? Well, they tried that, guys. They tried that, and that's what I was like very surprised myself. They actually went and tried it on a 40 and 45, and believe it or not, although they had increased performance, it still couldn't get close to uh, nine millimeter. And uh, without, like they were able to get that performance, but they had to really load it hot. Yeah. So where so now you're getting into the aspect of felt recoil and recoil yes. management. Yes. So they mm. were able to get to that, as is keeping the recoil management uh, yeah. a manageable point. They were not able to get to the ballistics performance of this nine millimeter. So if they made it hotter load, then obviously. So it just it probably just didn't make sense, right? I mean, you have capacity, you have weight, you have yeah. the lethality, you have the ballistic, the terminal ballistics on mm -hmm. your side. And nine mil is typically a, 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 the, probably one of the biggest contributing factors is cost, right? Mm -hmm. You've got more materials here, which ultimately translate typically to more money, right? So if you have a smaller projectile, a, therefore a smaller cartridge, you might have physically less materials, which also means less money being spent. Absolutely. Those are all other factors. Hmm. And the last point I want to make on the ballistics end of this thing is on the medical scale. Yeah. So medical experts yeah. talk about this. We talk about this 12 to 18 inch, which is a penetration okay. on a, uh, a projectile into a human body, right? Yeah. This is coming directly from the medical experts, guys. So mm -hmm. we're not making this up. So medical experts say in order to create this, you know, obviously Before you get too much further though, like, and we're talking medical experts, like not like Fauci, we're talking about like, you know, real medical experts. Yeah, not that. Okay, who's right. that? I just, just want to make sure. Okay. Right. Anyway. Um, yeah, so they're talking about like these medical experts, the medical examiners yeah. who have done countless of autopsies or surgeries, right? They are talking about 12 to 18 inches penetration into human body for incapacitating wound. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's where the 12 to 18 inches comes, comes here to this conversation. But I'm gonna tell you something actually that's more interesting here. And I have personally witnessed this myself numerous times. I used to be a crime scene investigator where I was spent a lot of time, uh, a lot of my time in, uh, in a morgue. And believe it or not, out of all the morgues, Cook County, Chicago. You saw a lot of bodies. <laughs> yep. I spent every single morning in the morgue because a lot of bodies I had were generally gunshot victims. And w when I was at the morgue, I would see a bunch of other victims uh, killed by gunfire. And I witnessed a lot of people with numerous different calibers, uh, the gunshot wounds with numerous different calibers. I'll tell you this. And I would ask this personally, and this has also been taught to me during my classes too, when I was getting trained or being certified. I asked a medical examiner like, hey, so 
how do you, can you tell a nine millimeter or a 45, whatever? Right. Every single one of them collectively say they cannot tell the difference between a nine millimeter permanent wound cavity. And permanent wound cavity is the hole or the path of the gun, uh, the, the bullet that's going through the flash, uh, flesh, sorry, <laughs> flesh that's destroying. Hmm. Like that's, how do I say this? Let me, let me rephrase this. The path the bullet takes. Yeah. That through that, that path, through the body, that flesh is destroyed. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause there's also a temporary wound cavity that the organs or the, uh, this creates flesh this, kind this, of yeah, expands. this really fast expansion. Then it comes back down. If you do like a slow motion of like a ballistic gel shooting, mm -hmm. right? You see that and that's that initial energy being transferred yep. on target. And that's what like, that <laughs> expanse is. Yeah. And then it comes back. So that's that terminal or that, um, uh, temporary. that temporary wound cavity that he's talking about. And as you can imagine, that delivering that energy onto a body is what's going to cause that incapacitating effect because you want that shock. Yep. You know, you want that like, oh, okay, all right, something obviously bad just happened, brain triggers mm -hmm. fall down, you know, seek comfort and get away from the situation yep. you're in. And yeah. that, and, uh, and I'm not even like, and that is, which we'll talk about, that is one thing and the permanent wound cavity is another thing. Permanent wound cavity stays there. The hole that bullet traveled through, the flesh in that region is destroyed, yeah. period. So. Ouch. You would think a lot of people say that oh 45 you know I'll shoot you and yeah, it's I'll shoot a bigger you in the hand, hole but you're gonna miss your you're gonna be missing your whole arm you know yeah, what I mean? oh yeah it's a, they say it's a bigger hole yeah when you open the person up for a surgery or autopsy the wound cavity looks the same on a nine millimeter or and uh, a 45 now or 40 okay they're hmm. they're identically so actually medically they can't even tell oh I can tell this is a nine millimeter. Yeah. or this is that, they can't. Rifle, they can tell because that rifle creates this temporary wound cavity. So pistols create temporary wound cavities. So just like that much and it comes right. back. So our flesh is elastic. Yeah. It can kind of stretch up to a certain point and come back together, which is fine. With pistols, pistol caliber, it's, it's fine. With rifles, it expands so much, but it just tears the flesh. So they're able to actually tell because it's more devastating uh, wound yeah. due to high velocity. Uh, but so going back to nine millimeters, so you're really getting about similar performance or similar uh, wound cavity yeah. uh, compared to 45. Which that is kind of mind blowing to me. It is, you know? dude, I've seen it. So, and so, so what you're trying to say is right now, all the guys out there, the reason I carry 45 is because they don't make a 46, that that argument with modern loading of nine millimeter is pretty much null and void. According to science, I'm just a messenger, so don't kill the messenger here. <laughs> According to science, and Bureau, the, com the comment section's still gonna do it. I know. I know. We, we just read Who's those. We just read the mean comments. All right, bad boy. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm used to it. You, you can continue saying that. But. Uh, it, according to science, according to studies, a lot of money invested by the Bureau, Bureau's Ballistic Research Facility, mm. which is well, worldwide respected, 9mm currently, a 9mm will get the job done just as good as a 45, if not better. That's one. On top of that, as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of positives. Guys, 9mm, you'll have more capacity. Yeah. You'll, stay, you'll stay in the fight longer, okay? You'll send some more rounds down range, let's just say that. You, it's going to be lighter. Your gun can be lighter. And recoil management. So we're talking about law enforcement in this case. Yeah. Law enforcement accuracy rate, like generally gunfights are between three to five yards on, a, on average. The accuracy is about 25 to 30% max or two to, like out of 10 rounds, two or three hits on average, yeah. okay, nationwide. So you're already not really accurate because gunfights are very rarely static. They're very dynamic. Adrenaline is pumping, blood rush. Pretty much, no matter how good you think you are, you suck. Go to the range. Exactly. And if you think you're good at the range, take about 75% off that based on st statistics. On Hold on, I'm just setting a reminder to tell myself that every single day when I wake up. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So with that being said, you're going to have accuracy issues, right? Because a lot of people during those uh, gunfights, you do. And uh, with the 9mm, you're mm -hmm. going to have a better uh, recoil management better follow through, yeah. which will directly translate into a more accurate uh, shot placement, which 40 is known to be very snappy. Yeah. When I first started law enforcement, guys, I was issued a Smith & Wesson MP40. And then moved on to my other agency, they gave me Glock 22. Yeah. And they were, they're snappy, yeah. they're, they really are snappy. And nine millimeter is just softer, so better management. And plus, 
as you just said about your uh, federal. Yeah. More availability. Yeah. You'll have more available more availability on the uh, nine millimeter. Yeah. And uh, cost. Yeah. And it's funny too because the, um, one of the reasons we bring this up, obviously, we're giving away a nine millimeter gun, but a lot of the law enforcement trade-ins we get here at Classic. Glock 22s for days. It's always 40 cals. Always, every now and then we'll get some nine mils, but I think they're just getting replaced with newer nine mils, yeah. right? But all the 40 cals that we're getting from different law enforcement agencies are typically getting replaced with nine millimeter. Not to say that 40 cal isn't still a viable option. It is, uh, but in a lot of different agencies still use 40 cal. Let us know if you're a law enforcement officer right now, is your agency or an armed guard, is your is your contractor or whatever, your agency, yeah. uh, what, caliber are you guys using? Actually, just let us know what guns you're using. <laughs> just let us know everything that you're running on your setup, all right? Because some people are actually really into that stuff. Love the belt setups. What holster are you running? What optic? What light? You know, like right now I'm kind of playing with this. Uh, it's ultimately a Shadow Systems um, XR920, which has the full size grip, but the 19 frame. And I threw my Glock 19 Gen 4 uh, slide on here with my Zev barrel just for fun and a little surefire with the DG. You know, switch, it's kind of neat. But uh, anyway, so talk to us about that. We got a couple of different 9mm guns on here. What the FBI actually uses, the Glock 19M, which is pretty cool. So the Glock 19M definitely brings back some memories, right? Oh yeah, damn. Yeah. When I first went to Quantico, they gave me this one. Yeah. I was so happy ditching the 22 and, and going for the 9mm. Oh my yeah. God. But you couldn't keep the 19M because it was, you know, you kept like closing the magazine on the, because I've done it once, yeah. what you're talking about here, and the, like the meat of your hand gets yeah. right in there. I don't have like the biggest bulkiest hands or anything like that. The 19 fits pretty good. I get, you know, it's it's very close, Yeah. you know, but I, I know what you're talking about because every now and then if I'm trying to be really fast, yep. I'll get, you know, get, well, I, I pinched my pinky there. there not, you go. not so much here, you know, but uh, so I, I see what you're coming from. So you actually went to the 17M, right? Yep, they gave yeah. me 17, it was too small Yeah. for these boys. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So you actually never like, you know, shot at anybody with a 19M then? Uh, oh, a lot <laughs> in uh, scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. No, not right? in real life, guys. No. no. Oh, okay. Because in COD, I do all the time. But uh, yeah. anyway, because uh, it's totally the same, you know? Yeah. COD status, uh, operator, so operating yeah, operationally. I but uh, anyway, we'll leave it off there. Let us know what you guys think down below. Uh, um, law enforcement agencies, do you think the holding on to the 40 cal is worth it? Uh, a lot of agencies probably don't have the budget to go ahead and upgrade their guns and true. actually move to a nine mil or anything like that. They probably have stockpiles of 40 cal because that's what everybody's carrying. Mm -hmm. So once they deplete that, then maybe they might go into the nine mil or something like that. Illinois so, State Police, Yeah, my old agency. What'd you guys carry there? 40, Glock 22, 40 caliber. And uh, I heard that they're actually wanting to transition to uh, nine millimeter, but yeah. apparently there's a lot of inventory. So it's budgeting guys. There's yep. also another big reason, budgeting. So. Yeah, yeah. So just let us know what you guys think. And like I said before, the reason we were kind of talking about all this uh, nine mil fun stuff today is because of our current giveaway, which is a lot smaller than our last giveaway, but still pretty freaking cool. The HK, yes, this is an actual HK SP5K. This does have the shorter 5.8 inch barrel on it. It does have the Franklin Armory binary trigger in it because why the heck not? Uh, 130 round magazine. You've also got the uh, Comp M5 by Aimpoint sitting right on top of the B&T Picatinny mount for it. The brace we decided to throw on here. First of all, you'll notice that there's actually a Picatinny attachment right back here, which is yeah. pretty cool. I actually kind of forgot to talk about that in the uh, giveaway video. Uh, but it's a Picatinny attachment that uh, replaces the uh, butt plate back here that allows you to throw on a Picatinny brace. And that's what we've got here. I like really this brace. It just offers a lot more stability. Side folding, as you can see, deploy that. And now you are ready to go, right? And it is an awesome freaking time. So check out our video. Watch me and Kaya do some running and gunning with some uh, MP5s. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it off there. And uh, did you hear what the code word was for this one? No. You want uh, to tell me? Yeah, dude. So since it's the SP5K, which stands for Kurtz, K-U-R-Z, Kurtz is what the giveaway video, uh, giveaway video, right. is what the giveaway code is to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. And uh, you might be able to use the word short. It might work because they're the exact same thing. Just, just try it, see what happens. Try both. Yeah, yeah try both. Yeah, see what happens. Anyway, we'll leave it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.